Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hillary Moore. We are going to do a video on how to check your blood sugar for beginners. No, it won't do to take off driving my car that wouldn't get me far enough. It won't All right, so let's do a swipe with our handy dandy freestyle meter, right? So I'm gonna unlock my phone, go to my freestyle app, and then you click check glucose. And then I'm gonna scan the sensor. And it's a little off. I'm actually surprised because this sensor has actually been pretty accurate. It says I'm 103 and stable, and I'm actually at 77. So it's off by about like 30 or so points. Mainly the biggest thing for me with the freestyle is it's showing me that I'm stable and it has an arrow and I can see where it's trending. So if I look at my graph too and I'm seeing that it went up and it's kind of going down like a little, like it had a little peak and it's going down, then I'm like, okay, maybe I need to keep an eye on it. But that's the biggest thing for me with the Libre is knowing where it's going so then I can kind of predict and eat accordingly. It's really nice, but the reviews can be in a different video. So that is it for the majority of this video on how to check your blood sugar. I do want to let you know that um, the blood sugar ranges. So when I first started checking my blood sugar, I had no idea what was a good blood sugar, what was a bad blood sugar. And so you really want to be within 70 to 140. Um, that's the average healthy person's um, range. Gotta think of that word there. So the average healthy range is between 70 to 140. What I kind of did is I was only checking when I had symptoms or when I was feeling kind of sick after eating. And when I first started checking, I was in the 30s and I had no idea. I didn't know. I thought that was like, oh, that's not that bad. And of course, looking back now, I'm like, that was pretty bad. Just kind of keep an eye on it. If you are checking it and you are normal but you're still feeling symptoms, you could be having postprandial syndrome which is where your blood sugar can be maybe on the lower end but it's not actually low. So anything 70, like 70 you can start feeling symptoms especially if you're dropping. Like right now me being 77, I'm a little lightheaded but it's not anything crazy because I think I'm pretty stable. Anything below 70 is considered low. So um, if you're like 85 and you're having symptoms, some people do have that happen to them, but that's called postprandial, which they are not actually reactive hypoglycemic because they're not actually low. They're just feeling the same symptoms, but maybe the 85 is lower for them on their range. That's a whole completely different thing, but that is something to check into if you're still having these same kind of symptoms, but you're not actually low. If, however, you are noticing that you are having low blood sugars after eating, something that can kind of help you get an idea of really what's going on is if you, um, eat a meal that's somewhat reactive for you that you know that you kind of have symptoms with and then I would check your blood sugar as soon as you're starting to feel symptoms and maybe even sometimes within 10 minutes of eating because I find that my blood sugars move so quick. Some doctors tell me that they can't possibly be moving that quick but my blood sugars move so quick. I think the other day um, I was monitoring it on my freestyle and I just had a um, a sweet tea with my meal and I'd had maybe like five or six sips, tiny sips. I was like drinking water and I was eating the food. And I was like, okay, maybe it'll balance itself out. The sweet tea was free by the way. So I was like, I can't turn down free sweet tea. 
That was my problem number one. So I was like 165, 167, which is pretty high um, for me and for anybody that's not diabetic. Usually you want to stay below 140 or 150, even after you've had a really big carb load or a big meal. I checked it, it was told me I was like 160, and I was like, okay, I'm going to keep an eye on it. And I fell from 160 to 60 within probably 20, 15 to 20 minutes. It was really fast. <laughs> so it's just one of those things where reactive hypoglycemia, I'm not sure if you are the same way, but mine moves so quick that you have to be really careful and checking yourself and knowing yourself. Like sometimes if I'm really not active and I sit after a meal, I'm okay, but then within an hour of me being active and going and walking somewhere, then I'm low. So really you just need to start learning your body, learning what different foods react to you, and that will give you more of an idea of what's going on and how you can help yourself and um, start eating foods that aren't so reactive for you. So super huge disclaimer, I am not a doctor. <laughs> I am not a health professional. This is just my opinion and this is just what I've been through and what I've seen that works for me. And I have actually had people that were nurses that, um, that were friends of somebody that we were friends with that were saying, why are you checking your blood sugar? You haven't been diagnosed with anything. That's just dangerous. And I wanna say from my opinion, it is not dangerous. Do not let that keep you from figuring out if something is wrong because that was when I first was having lows and I had no idea I was having 35, sometimes more than once a day. And if I hadn't been checking, then I would continue to be having those. I could have had something really bad happen to me. And if I had followed that advice and not checked my own blood sugar or not been an advocate for myself, I would probably be be very sick now or I wouldn't be here now so that's just something to think of if you have people that are telling you oh you're being a hypochondriac why are you checking this as long as it's not obsessive and as long as when you're checking it you do find something like if you're checking it and you do a postprandial and you're not low and you're consistently not low for our, like I would say maybe like a couple weeks, then maybe it isn't your blood sugar that's causing the problems. Maybe you're having low blood pressure and a doctor could help you with that. And maybe you need to see somebody to um, find out another cause for those symptoms. But if you are consistently checking your blood sugar for a couple of weeks and you are getting low blood sugars, then you're onto something. And then you know that you might have something going on there. You can see an endocrinologist, they can help you. I know that sometimes you really have to find one that knows what he's doing when it comes to this, but um, it is a journey and I have lots of videos here. We are here for you and I know that there's tons of people in the comments too that are going through the exact same thing that you're going through. We are all just trying to figure out the best way to get through this and the best way to manage it and handle it and so um, if you are a couple years down on your journey and you're like, hey, this is what I do, let me know in the comments. I want to know what you're doing and what's working for you and maybe how you check your blood sugars and um, sharing that information is always great for everybody else too because then hopefully we'll figure this out because sometimes doctors can help but they don't always know everything. So anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, um, please subscribe and click the notification bell so you can know whenever I post a video. I'm definitely going to be doing more videos more often now. I recently got a new job that I'm working at part-time so that way I do have more time to film videos and be here for y'all and I'm actually starting my own business. I know it's crazy. That's where I'm at right now. <laughs> this is that office. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and I look forward to talking to you in the comments. Take care.